Oh. Good morning. This is yoga for your brain. And maybe we'll just pause that. Yeah, so just simple exercise, even taking a walk is good for your brain. It's all about getting oxygen, which is carried in the blood, which is why in yoga, you get a little more oxygen to your brain because of inversions. Typically, we don't walk on our hands. So therefore, we're going to practice a few simple inversions this morning. But a couple other things I wanted to say was that the brain is an organ um, with about 100 billion neurons. And uh, there's, there's probably room right up here and here, OK? Um, and uh, copper is what connects those uh, 100 billion neurons to about 10,000 other. And really, neurons are just like neurotransmitters. It's just connecting the dots. And when I tell you that copper is a great source, many of you will know that seafood, like oysters, uh, green leafy vegetables, mushrooms, um, nuts, and dark chocolate all contain copper. <laughs> Now, if you have a copper deficiency, it could be, um, you know, you may find that you're fatigued, you have, you know, arthritis, anemia, these are all symptoms. They can be symptoms of other things as well, so I don't want your imagination to run wild. What I do want you to know is that your diet always matters. So, um, even feeling cold all the time. but. That also depends on your dosha, and that's a whole other topic that I think we're going to talk about that in the next um, session in the new year. Stress and anxiety, they don't do anything for brain function. They impair it, hands down. And I love the expression, if you can do something about it, why worry? If you can't do something about it, why worry? Truly, we have to pay attention. So at the end of this class, as I mentioned in the note, we are going to do a little mindful meditation. Um, so let's get started and uh, dream about yet another reason to be able to eat dark chocolate. We're gonna do our cat cow. So every time your head is lower than your heart, your heart is pumping more blood into your head. And of course, as I said, you can't separate the head from the mind. And of course, more blood, more oxygen, better function. So come on onto your hands and knees and place your hands underneath your shoulders with your fingers pointing forward. And if you can see the wrinkles in your wrist, they should be aligned with the front of your mat. And of course, if you have wrist issues, you can take your hands a little bit further forward or come onto your knuckles. Knees, of course, if they need extra cushioning, then just double your mat over, fold it in this place where your knees are. On an exhale, round your spine, tuck your chin, pull your bellies in, exhaling. On an inhale, if you wish, you can curl your toes under as you slowly hollow out your lower back, lengthening through your chest and just lifting your head without cranking your neck. And exhale, round your spine. Make this a nice fluid movement as you tuck your chin and drop your tail and pull your bellies in. And inhaling, hollow out your lower back lifting your tail, lengthening through the front of your body as you lift your head. Eyes can be floating up, open or closed towards your Ajna Chakra, that center between your eyebrows in the center of your head. And exhaling, again, rounding your spine, tucking your chin, pulling your bellies in, and last time, curl your toes under, hollow out your lower back, lengthen through your heart centers to open, stretch, lift, and return to neutral. And just sense your lower back. 
And because we're going to do a brief meditation on mindfulness, just be paying attention, how your body's feeling. And now you can take your knees a little bit wider apart. We're going to come into our modified child's pose. Now, if your knees bending that much or uncomfortable, then just leave your bum up in the air like puppy pose. And if you're able, bring your forehead to the floor. If you can, bend your knees. And then let your hips sink back towards your heels. And breathe into your side and back ribs. Stretching your internal and external intercostal muscles. These are the muscles around your rib cage. These are the muscles that allow your lungs to expand ever greater. If these muscles are tight, it will reduce the amount of oxygen that you can take in. And once again, your heart is still slightly higher than your head. So child's pose or puppy pose has a calming effect. And then let's take both hands over to the left and maybe you can place your right hand on top of your left just to give a little extra stretch through the side of your body. And breathe the right side. And return to the center with your hands and just spend a moment in the middle. And then tippy toe, if you will, if you can, if it feels okay, hands over to the right side, placing your left hand on top of your right. So it's a nice stretch for the shoulders and it's stimulating for your spine. And bring your hands back to the center and come on up onto your knees. Now, we're going to do dolphin pose. And dolphin pose is, uh, you know, easier for some of us than downward facing dog, but they're both excellent to get extra blood supply. So in dolphin pose, you're coming onto your forearms. You're interlocking your fingers and taking your bottom baby finger and bringing it inside of your palm. So you're placing your forearms on the floor, curl your toes under, lift your hips up, and just let your head hang. You're not touching the floor with your head. If you wish, you can bring your toes a little bit further or a closer to your head or not, or back. But of course, this is a nice stretch for the backs of the legs. Really important to keep the muscles in the ankles, the Achilles tendon, the calf, nice and stretched. And breathe. So of course, this does strengthen the shoulders. And release, bring your knees down. And then just to take child's pose with your knees closer together just to stretch out the shoulders from performing dolphin. And inhale, come up, and then come on to your backs. And draw your knees into your chest, one hand on each knee. Extend your left leg down in front and with your left hand on the outside of your right knee, draw it across your body. You don't have to take it too far. We're going to do this a couple times with a variation the second time. So again, mindfully notice where are you tightest? Your IT band, your hip, your butt, Maybe it's your right shoulder or armpit. Just breathe into this area with loving kindness. No judgment.
inhaling, rolling onto your back. Keep that right knee up and bent. Draw the left leg up, bend the knee. Extend and straighten your right leg down in front and take your right hand onto the outside of your left knee and bring it across your body. Everything can be a meditation. Yoga can be a meditation if we're simply focusing and being mindful. This is a meditation. Meditation has no destination. It's almost like a natural curiosity about whatever you're feeling, about whatever, if you're sitting on a park bench, looking out at water, looking up at sky, looking at trees. That's how simple meditation can be. It's just a single focus of your awareness. And inhale to come back to the center. Pull that left knee in and draw the right knee up. And now extend your left leg uh, down in front. Take your left hand once again to the outside of your right knee. Pull it across your body. Now, as you're pulling it across your body, can you bend the other leg? Can you take hold of the foot or the ankle if it's not available or accessible? Don't worry about it. But if you can, both knees will be bent. Both legs are bent. And then allow that top knee to roll over to one side and the other knees bent. It's not the goal, but it's possible that one day, and maybe it's today, both of your knees might be on the floor and both of your shoulders, but that's not the goal. There's no destination here. It's the only thing is for you to focus on how it feels. And of course, practicing with awareness, respect, and compassion. We don't need to add to ours or anybody else's suffering to be mindful of this always. And if we do contribute to somebody's suffering, or even our own, a simple apology, I'm so sorry. Release your bottom leg, roll on to your backs, extend your right leg straight up, reach towards your ankle, Interlock your fingers as close to the ankle as you can. Your shoulder blades should be on the mat. Inhale in place, exhale. Pull that leg towards you as you lift head, neck, and shoulders, bringing your nose close to your knee or your chin towards your shin. And releasing your hands, bringing your arms and your torso to the floor, slowly lengthen and lower that right leg. Giving your hip flexors a little bit of work and your lower abs. If you find yourself off to one side of your mat, scoot yourself back into your center or perhaps a little bit to the left inhaling in place exhale draw your left knee up in towards your chest with your right hand draw it across your body but before you go all the way over bend the other leg 
See if you can take hold of the foot or the ankle. You may get a little cramping as I just did in the back of my ham. String, so let it go and try again. And then try to settle into whatever your final spinal twist with bent knees is. And be sure to breathe. So inhaling through your nose, exhaling through your mouth, perhaps twice as long as your inhale helps to calm your entire nervous system, which helps your brain relax. And then release your bottom leg, roll onto your backs, draw your left knee into your chest, straighten that left leg. Please don't lock the knee, just straighten it as best you can. Interlock your fingers somewhere close to your ankle, preferably further away from your knee than, and closer to your ankle. With your shoulder blades on the mat, inhale in place, exhale. As you pull the leg towards you, lift your head, neck, shoulders, bringing your face towards your leg. Breathe into your hamstrings. This is excellent for increasing peristalsis in the intestinal uh, region, the large intestine. Anytime we compress the area between the top of the thigh and the lower abdominal, you're getting into your ascending, descending, and transcending colon. So if you have issues in this department, eat more fiber and consider some of these yoga moves. And then lower your head back to the floor. Release your hands, lower your arms beside your body. Lengthen and straighten your leg and slowly lower the leg using your muscles, not gravity, please. Okay, bend your legs and place the soles of your feet on the floor. Now you're gonna roll from side to side and bring your hands underneath your butt. And your palms are facing down, your hands are under your butt, your wrists and maybe part of your forearms are also underneath your uh, lower back and ribs, but hands are underneath your butt. Now, straighten your legs out in front of you. We're gonna come into fish pose, matsyasana. So, you're gonna use your elbows to lift your upper body off the floor. So come on up, have a look, have a look. So you're up on your elbows and then just let your head fall back. And if you can, allow the crown of your head to rest on the floor. There should be less than 10% of your weight in the top of your head. There may only be one or 2%. Most of this weight is going to be on your elbows forearms, hands, and lower part of your body. But again, the heart is being lifted higher than your head. This is a beautiful stretch for the throat. So within the throat, your thyroid gland, which is the master of metabolism, and your parathyroids, which controls the amount of calcium in your blood, as well as your bones. And we will be doing another posture to um, stimulate, rejuvenate parathyroid and thyroid inside 
of your throat chakra. Also, too, the throat chakra is associated with fatigue, depression, anxiety. And then carefully lift your head up and come on all the way down. Remove your hands and arms from under your body and just gently roll your head to the left. Inhaling back to center, exhaling other side. And back to the center and one more time to the left. Inhale, center, and last time, other side. And back to the center. Okay, either uh, rock up, because we need to get our blocks now. So hopefully you have a couple. And then I'm just going to show you, how's the heat? I may be getting cool air from the back room. How are we doing for temperature now that we're in here? Should I just crank it a little bit, or are we good? Yeah, we're a little bit up? No, we're good. Okie dokie. Okay, so just optional here. Depending on how you're feeling, we're going to come into bridge pose. Again, excellent for reversing blood flow. But if you're feeling a little lethargic today, a little tired, you want to be a little gentle with yourself, you can put your block under your sacrum. That's fine. If you're feeling a little more energized, then put your block between your knees because that's going to make your thighs work a little bit harder, okay? And if you don't have blocks and you're watching at home, you don't need them either, all right? So I may put my block, I'm going to go for the energy and put that between my thighs. And then your heels are lining up with your sits bones, your arms are beside your body with your palms facing down, Lift your shoulder blades up and tuck them under. Tilt your chin towards the center of your chest to lengthen the back of your neck. Let's press the small of the back into the floor for a moment and engage our abdominal muscles. Oh, I bought an interesting uh, thing at the one of a kind, which I'll bring into a class at some point, but it works your core. <laughs> if it doesn't kill me. Uh, you have to practice for about 45 minutes holding on to something before you get the hang of it. So it's all about balance. And it was just, I'm just reminded because last week we did talk about our core. Okay, peel your spine off the floor, tilting the pelvis and tailbone up, slowly peeling, coming into Setu Bandhasana, bridge pose. Activating hips and thighs, of course, but getting once again the heart a little higher than the head. So typically only 25% of the blood goes higher than the heart when we're standing or sitting. Now this is going to get extra blood supply into the throat area. Excellent for communication and for all the other reasons that I just mentioned as well. That's throat chakra. One more breath in, and starting from the top of your spine, slowly coming all the way back down. And if you had a block between your legs, just remove it for a moment and draw your knees up into your chest and do a little rocking from side to side. So it's kind of like a little bit of a massage for your lower back, lower part of your spine. And let's practice this one more time. So knees are bent, feet are flat on the floor. You may use a block or not between your legs or under your sacrum. Arms are beside your body. Palms are facing down. Lift your shoulder blades up, tuck them under your heart, tilt your chin towards the center of your chest. Press the small of your back into the floor, pull your abs in towards your spine. Feel your core engage a lot. 
and peel your spine off the floor, activating your quadriceps, your hamstrings, your glutes. And then if you can, interlock your fingers underneath your body with your knuckles pointing towards your heels. Do a little rocking from side to side. Now, if you've got a block under your um, sacrum, you're probably not going to be doing this. Can you straighten your arms, bring your shoulder blades as close together as possible? So this is a great opener for the front of your body. I think Christine is practicing at home and had a bad accident, tripped over a branch in the dark at the back of her house and broke her collarbone. So Christine, you're not doing this. <laughs> but press up as much as you can here. and breathe. We have to be mindful to avoid accidents. They're not always avoidable, but the more mindful we can move throughout our day, whether it's a loose carpet at home, um, a curb, that ice will be coming, And mindfulness is simply being present. And then release your arms. And again, starting from the top of your spine, slowly lower your back all the way down. Release your block away from your mat. And then draw your knees up in towards your chest and take your arms out to the side, shoulder height. Inhale in place. Press the small of your back into the floor. Keep your knees together. Slowly release both over to the left and perhaps your head to the right. Inhale, center. Exhale, other side. And maybe your head to the opposite. Inhaling to the center with your knees and your head. Exhale, both knees. Try to keep your feet and your knees, your thighs glued together if possible. Head to the right. Exhaling and inhaling in place. Inhale once more to the center with your knees and your head. Exhale, both knees and feet to the right, your head to the left. Keeping your knees, if possible, 90 degrees to your torso. Inhale, back to center. And let's hug the knees one more time into the chest with one hand on each, or maybe you can wrap your arms around your knees. Again, excellent for purging your entire digestive system of toxins that are gonna be working their way out of your body and waste. Okay, either roll onto your side or place your hands underneath the backs of your knees and rock up to a seated position. And then this is where the other place where we might use our blocks. And of course, remember you have the three heights. So just have them in front. If you're not able to touch your toe, you touch, bring your fingertips to the floor comfortably, then have your blocks handy. And then roll back onto the soles of your feet. Please don't hyperextend your knees, but we're just gonna let their upper torso hang in Uttanasana. Now, can you bring your weight onto the balls of your feet? Notice what happens when you bring the weight onto the balls of your feet. You're gonna feel a little more stretch in the backs of your legs. So instead of the weight being more in the heels, just bring it more towards the balls and you get a little more stretch in those hamstrings because outside of yoga, we don't really stretch our hamstrings and I've torn and pulled my hamstrings, hopefully for the last time in this lifetime. Not fun, they hurt, but keep them stretched. 
and please just let your head hang. Just relax and let it go. So if you need those blocks to rest your hands on, please do so. Give your head a bit of a shake so you know you're not holding on to it. Alrighty, and then pressing the soles of your feet into the floor, push your blocks to the side if you were using them, slowly roll up, stacking one vertebra at a time, keep your chin tucked into your chest and let your head be the last thing to come up. And then inhale the shoulders up to your ears, exhale, roll them back. What a lovely day. Can you imagine minus nine yesterday, it'll be plus nine tomorrow. So, it is what it is. Okay, so come on up to the front of your mats for sun salutations. We'll warm you up if you're not warm enough yet. And by the way, you know, just doing downward dog a couple of times a week, if, if you've got any knee or hip issues, you have to be careful, of course, but that extension in downward dog, which we're going to do in sun salutations, can really improve. Because as I said, it's not the bones in the hips or the knees, it's the ligaments, it's the tendons typically that are injured. So when they're not stretched, blah, blah. Okay, inhaling in place, exhale, hands in prayer. Step your feet apart, arms up, reach up, look up and arc back, whatever amount. Inhale, bring your feet back towards one another. Engage your thighs, lift up out of your waist in axial extension. Exhale, bend from the tops of your legs, AKA your hips, reaching forward as you bring your fingertips to the floor. So bend your knees if you need to, and please let your head hang. Step your left leg back, drop the knee to the mat. Bring your hands onto your front right thigh. Focus your gaze for balance. Inhale, press through your back heel. That is your anchor. Inhale, sweep the arms up and breathe. Energize your fingers, turn them forward, bring them to the mat on either side of your front foot and take that other leg back. Now, if this is too much for your wrists and your shoulders, please drop your knees to the mat now. And then you can play around with how much weight your wrists or ankles can take by drawing your heart center forward or moving your heart center back if you've got your knees on the floor. Be sure you're pressing into your fingertips. If you're in plank position, your wrists, your elbows and your shoulders are in alignment. Your crown is reaching forward. Toes are curled under and your abdominal muscles are engaged. Release your knees. Flatten the tops of your feet so your toes are pointing backwards. Keep your hands stationary as you slowly draw your hips back towards your heels. Or if you can't bend your knees that much, keep your bum up. Stretching through the low back, right through the shoulders, right into the wrists and breathe. Staying low, start to come forward with your head. If you're able, lower your forearms and elbows onto the mat, slowly slithering forward, releasing the crown, I mean your chest and chin onto your mats. Slide everything out behind you and draw your fingertips back to align with your shoulders. Let your forehead rest on the floor, elbows tucked into your side body, forearms pressing towards the floor. Flatten the tops of your feet so your toes are pointing backwards. Press your hips and pelvis into the mat, 
Roll an invisible alley with your nose, lengthening your neck. On an inhale, lifting your head, neck, shoulders, chest, maybe part of your abdomen off the floor. Baby Cobra, Arda Bhujangasana, breathe. One more breath in, exhale, lengthen as you lower. Curl your toes under. You can press into your hands and lift your hips up right away or come up onto your knees and then press your hips up. Walk your feet a few inches forward, bend your knees, press your sits bones towards the back of your mat to lengthen your spine and take some of the weight out of your upper body as you press your heels down towards the floor. So this is what I was talking about, practicing downward facing dog a couple of times a week, good for your knees, good for your hips. Of course, this is an inversion. Clear thinking, calms the brain, gets extra blood, that's loaded with oxygen into this area. Lift your left leg up into the air. Look at your left hand. Swing that foot as far forward as you can. Other leg forward. Here we are back in Uttanasana. Arms beside your ears. Engage your thighs by lifting up on your kneecaps. Please pull your bellies in to protect your lower back as you sweep the arms in front. Reach up, stretch up, look up. Feet apart for balance, reach up and arc back. Inhaling, stretch up, exhale, forward fold, let your heads hang, bend your knees and sweep the arms out to the side, reaching up and overhead, hands in prayer to your heart center. And release your arms and let's do one more round. Inhale. Exhale, hands in prayer. Step your feet apart, arms up, reach up, look up, arc back. Inhale, bring your feet back together, lift up out of your waist, hinge from your hips, reaching forward and then down and let your head hang. Step your right leg back, drop the knee to the mat. Bring your shoulders right over your hips and bring your hands onto your front thigh. And then focus your gaze somewhere in front of you to lift the back knee off the floor, press through that heel. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Turn your hands forward, your fingers are alive and active, bring them to your mat, take your front foot back. Remember, no heroics. If this is hurting your shoulders or wrists, please come down onto your knees. If you're in plank, draw your bellies in, reach the crown of your head forward, heart center over thumbs, breathing, feel your core activated. Release your knees, flatten the tops of your feet slowly or leave your bum in the air if your knees don't like to bend 90 degrees. Taking hips back towards heels, leaving your hands where they are. Feel the release in your wrists, your shoulders, your lower back. And then leave your hands where they are. Release your forearms and elbows. Slowly come forward until your chest and your chin alight on your mat. Remember, we're as young as our spines. And yoga is simply the best exercise for your spine. This one for your alignment. And slide everything out behind you. Align your fingertips with the edges of your shoulders. Place your forehead on the mat. 
Draw your shoulders away from your ears as you press your forearms towards the floor, keeping your elbows tucked into your side rib cage. If you're considering the fuller expression of Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose, you may wish to widen your feet and press your baby toes into the mat. But let's see where we go. Roll an invisible alley with your nose, looking down at your mats on an inhale. Everybody begin in baby cobra. So your hands are just there as guidance. And now if you wish to press up into the fuller, press the floor away from you, keeping shoulders down, elbows tucked in, eyes opened or closed, but gazing up towards Ajna Chakra, the seat of intuition. Third eye. One more breath in, exhale slowly, lower, lengthening the torso as you bring it back down. If you spread your feet apart, bring them back together, curl your toes under, lift yourselves up into downward facing dog, walking your feet a couple of inches forward, and then bend your knees and press your belly onto your thighs, press your chest towards your knees, and now press your heels towards the floor. They don't have to touch the floor. Just feel that stretch in the backs of your legs and you've taken a whole bunch of the weight out of the upper part of your body and redistributed it into the lower part. Downward facing dog and inversion. I think it was BKS Iyengar who said inversions are a person's best friend, but they really do make a difference to the brain region. And then lift that right leg up, look at your right hand, swing that foot as far forward as you can. Other leg forward, back in Uttanasana, let your head hang, bring your arms beside your ears, pull your bellies in and sweep the arms in front, reaching up, feet apart for balance, look up, reach up and arc back. Inhale, bring your feet back together. Lift up out of your waist, axial extension. Exhale, float your upper body down towards your legs. Please let your heads hang and then bend your knees. Inhale, sweep the arms out to the side, up and overhead. Hands together in prayer. Anjali Mudra and release your hands. So we're going to do one more posture before we do a breathing exercise and mindfulness brief. It's all going to be brief, but we're going to do our shoulder stand. Now, again, if shoulder stand is not for you today or ever, and if you're at home, please feel free. What I do want everyone to do is to be sure that you're going to, going to get uh, your heart higher than your head. So you're going to use a, a block under uh, your sacrum if you only wish to get your legs up in the air. Or if you're home, put something under your sacrum and put your legs up against the wall if you don't wish to uh, do the full shoulder stem. Because I'm also thinking that we're going to try plow pose, halasana. So Choose which way you wish to practice. You can bend your legs and place your arms beside your body. And then lift your legs and just come halfway up. So keep your knees bent. Your hands are supporting your hips. And then eventually, if you are going to come all the way up, you're going to bring your hands closer to your waist. And then extend your legs straight up. So, of course, this is highly rejuvenating and nourishing for your thyroid gland. As I mentioned, the thyroid uh, gland responsible, it's the master of your metabolism. So if you have a slow metabolism, consider inversions or this one, of course, Sharvangasana, parathyroid, as I said, there are two of them next to your thyroid and they determine the amount of calcium in the blood and how much calcium gets into your bones. Now, if you're willing to try halasana, let's lower one leg over behind the head 
and then maybe the second leg over behind your head. And just see how it goes. For sure, any extra weight around the middle can be an impediment to halasana. It's a great stretch for the lower back, of course, your entire spine. But the idea here is let's bring right leg back up, left leg into shoulder stand is reversing the blood flow to nourish the pineal gland. It produces melatonin to help us sleep. So we're getting extra blood supply to the pineal gland, the hypothalamus. It is the master of all endocrine glands. And it is, you know, when it's working better, everything is improved, almost everything in your body. Okay, and then lower your legs over behind your head. We're gonna come out of this now. Release your hands to the floor and slowly release your torso with whatever control you can muster. And bring your knees into your body at this point. And once again, rocking a little bit from side to side. Or perhaps making big circles. It's always good to do twist positions after we practice a um, shoulder stand. But a shoulder stand, what we just performed is known as the queen position of yoga because of its benefits, headstand known as the king. And let's not underestimate that extra blood supply, what it does for our skin. It might be the best skin care on the market. That's not on the market, I should say. <laughs> okay, place your hands underneath the backs of your thighs or roll over onto your side. And bring yourself into a seated position. Now, if sitting on a block cross-legged doesn't work for you, um, you could grab a chair or sit on a bench if it's a problem. So what we're going to practice first, because it's always helpful to get into a little bit of a meditation, is alternate nostril breathing. And most of us have done this before. You're going to take your right hand, you're going to take your peace fingers and fold them in. You're going to block your right nostril approximately where the flesh and the cartilage meet. That's where you're going to block. So you're gonna block that with your thumb and then with your ring finger, you're gonna block the other side in the same area. And then I will guide you uh, as to how we're going to do this. So just reserve any kind of judgments or ideas about what's going on here. Um, if you have any, some of you are practiced in this and you know the benefits. Okay, so just close your eyes, release your hands onto your thighs for a moment. And just feel the air entering through your nostrils. And leaving. And just try to sit up as straight and tall as you can. Relaxing your shoulders, relaxing your face, your jaw, separating the biting surfaces of the teeth. There are many um, peer-reviewed art articles and tests that are showing that breathing exercises, meditation can change, literally change your brain. Create new pathways. And stop some of the old ones that are not serving us. So let's prepare our right hand by folding your peace fingers in towards your palm. Place your thumb on your right nostril, sit up nice and tall, inhale through your left nostril. Block the left, exhale right. Inhale right. Lock the right, exhale left. 
Inhale left. Lock, exhale right. Inhale right. Lock the right, exhale left. Keep sitting up nice and tall. Inhale left. Lock, exhale right. Inhale right. Lock your right, exhale left. Inhale left. Lock, exhale right. Inhale right. Lock and exhale left. And lower your hand, keep your eyes closed and just resume normal breathing. Now there's another breathing technique that I just want to share with you briefly. It's called box breathing. People who have high stress jobs uh, are taught this like policemen, soldiers, and box breathing is counting to four to breathe in, holding for four, exhaling for four, holding again for four before you breathe in. So let's just try this because if you were obviously somewhere where you were feeling a bit of stress but it wouldn't look, you wouldn't be comfortable bringing your hands up to your nose or you're, you just need, in even just four minutes of this, we're not going to do four minutes, I just want to share this with you. In this case, if you wish to turn your palms up in the open and receiving position, joining your thumb and pointer fingers in Dhyana Mudra, just recycles the energy. It's also the mudra of wisdom. And just breathe normally in. And then let's breathe into the count of four. One, two, three, four. Holding for four. Three, two, one. Exhale, four. Three, two, one. And again, holding. One, two, three, four. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Retain for four, three, two, one. Exhale, four, three, two, one. And retain, one, two, three, four. And that will do. And just sitting quietly for a moment. Become aware of that which is touching the ground. These breathing exercises help us calm and ground ourselves. Relaxing your face your eyelids, your forehead. Just noticing anything at all without engaging. It's a great practice simply to be mindful, simply to be curious. There's no destination here. There's no goal. other than you being present.
compassionate, caring, Align your spine. Relax your shoulders. Like every part of your body, it requires both exercise and rest. Meditation is resting your mind. Even when the thoughts come up, because that's what the mind does, Just notice and love that you have a mind. Like an active child. Love it, observe it, and just smile. The act of smiling changes your brain chemistry. Not everything in life is complicated. Some of our best times are just simple. Quiet. Presence. Being grateful. Showing deep respect for having a human birth and a life to experience wonder, beauty, nature. It is a beautiful life. And our brains can only hold one thought at a time. Choose positive as often as you can. It will reflect in your countenance your energy levels, people will notice. It will attract.
Inhaling the life force, long, full, and deep. And exhaling all the carbon dioxide out. And one more breath in as you sweep the arms up and overhead. Bring your hands together into prayer and bring your hands to your heart center and bow to your own inner guru, your own inner goodness and light. Thank you for sharing your yoga practice today. Namaste. Any questions or comments are welcome. Have a beautiful day. Yeah, you didn't get your Shavasana. Go home and lie down. <laughs> yeah, this is